Major, I know you're going to say you don't get into all the rankings and all that stuff, but you just beat a 21st ranked team in the country by three touchdowns. What does that say about your team? Just the way they the, the way they prepare. Um, yeah, we've got a great group of kids, man. I mean, we do. Everybody says that, and, and I understand that's the coaching thing to say, but uh, the way our guys prepare, the way they respond to coaching, if you go back and you look at the way our coaches talked in fall camp, I mean, everything we asked them to do, they delivered. And you can go back and search those quotes. They, they've been doing the same thing all year. They just keep delivering what we keep asking them to do. Um, they keep encouraging each other. Uh, they're, they're a tight-knit group, and, and I'm just I'm proud of them. And it's a bunch of kids from the city that have, have stayed in town and are working their tails off, and it doesn't matter the odds, whether there's an All-American playing or not. Um, I'm just proud of them. I'm proud to be a, a small part of them. What about your quarterback and what he did today, accounting for seven touchdowns? <sighs> He's, uh, he's everything that we, we thought he could be and more. And I'm just, again, you know, a guy that just grew up right down 288. And, um, you know, we just we continue to get the great players from this city and keep stacking our roster with guys like that that are competitive, that want to play for their city, that want to go to school at their, at their university here in town. We're going to be just fine. Major, before we uh, dive too much more into the game, uh, can you kind of go over Ed's situation, why he was kept out, you know, what, what exactly he did this week? Yeah, he's uh, he's been going through rehab and some drills, and just didn't feel like it was the right time, um, you know, for him to go in. So it just continues to be day to day. He'll go back out there tomorrow, excuse me, when we practice and uh, go through some drills, and then we'll just like like we've been doing, just keep monitoring his situation. And I love Ed. We all love Ed, and we want Ed to play. Uh, but I thought this was a huge win for our team uh, from a morale standpoint and a confidence standpoint that. You know, when you may lose a two-time All-American, you can still go out there and, and, and you know, obviously they're, they're an explosive offense. They're going to make some plays, but play good defense, uh, allow our offense to do what they do and separate the score. I'm just proud of the way they responded. No decision for SMU yet on that? No, sir. It'll be day to day. No doubt, and and that's you know that's the direction we wanted to go offensively, you know to bring in highly competent people, very confident people, very positive people um, that can develop trust. You know X's and O's are X's and O's, but if you have a level of trust with who's coaching you, and and you have confidence in them because they are competent, um, then your then your skill level and your level of play is going to go out the roof, and that's what you're seeing with all these guys. They've bought in, um, they've worked their tails off, they challenge each other. Uh, it's it's almost like a competition amongst them to see who can make the next play and and who can you know help contribute to the offense. So just very very proud of the way the coaches have grabbed their attention, engage them every week, and the and the players respond to that. Back on the defense, they uh, USF had a, a scored a touchdown. I believe it got called back on a, on a holding, and they were deep in your territory. And that was the situation where your defense could have given up a touchdown. Instead, they came back. I think with three straight plays and forced a. A field goal seemed to kind of turn things at that point, keeping them out of the end zone. Yeah, yeah, we had the you know weird situation with throwing away ball and safety and cutting it to a five point game and just some just some craziness there to start the third quarter. And the way our defense just settled down and played there, forced a field goal, like you said, it was huge. And defense is different now. I mean, it was different when I was growing up. I mean, you, you saw people hold them to seven and ten points. And it's just it's not the same game anymore. And you've got to play great in the red zone. Uh, we forced some stops. Had had a few takeaways there in the second half that. Uh, you know, we had one turnover. We really had two in the first half. One was a Hail Mary at the end. Uh, but taking the ball away and taking care of the football in the second half was huge for us as a football team. Yes, sir, Jerome. I know. He, he's got tremendous, and I'm not trying to, he's got tremendous feel for the position. He knows when to escape, when to let the ball go, when to hold it and sit there and squeeze the trigger in the pocket. Um, and then he's just got that same competitive juice that you saw Greg Ward have. I mean, it's fourth and six, and we run quarterback counter. And the guy just wills it into the end zone. And I mean, that's that to me embodies like what we are as a football team, what we are as university, what we are in the city of Houston. Just I don't care what the odds are, we're going to make it happen. And I, I love that he's the leader of our football team. And it's he's just a tremendous ambassador for our football program, too. And talking about preparation, last few weeks, you know, drops have been a problem. But tonight, I, I think maybe there was one, and that was a really contested ball. So talk about the work the receivers have done. Yeah, Coach Guyton's done an outstanding job with those guys. And like we talked about earlier, it's just it's almost a competition amongst them. 
you know, to see who can make the next play, who can make the next spectacular play. And, you know, you saw Courtney go down and, you know, God willing, and, and what I've heard already, medical reports, it's not as serious as they may have thought. So that's great news. But uh, you see the very next play, you see another guy step in and Raylon Singleton, boom, bang, touchdown. So those guys are having a great time competing. Coach Guy is doing a great job with them. Along those lines, Jeremy Singleton also had a, a oh, big I'm, game. I mean, the, the, you've you've had kind of those same three, but uh, as you get people healthy like Raylon, and then you get Jeremy, how how much does that just add to what you guys uh, can do? Jeremy has done so well. You know, it's, it's it's you know I was texting him Sunday just how you know he's on our leadership committee, and just how proud I am of him. And and I remember going down to Brother Martin in New Orleans to recruit him and sitting there at the school with his mom and uh, just what kind of family he comes from, what kind of young man he is. Uh, very mature and just stepped up, made some huge plays. One on a third down, uh, one to score, then another one on a two-point conversion. And he, he's he's a solid. I mean, he's a solid, solid young man. I'm just proud of him. And again, when you have guys like that on your team, it makes your job a lot easier. And these guys are dependable, trustworthy. They love each other. They, you know, they demand the best out of each other. And it's uh, it's it's a really good thing. We just can't fall in love with ourselves and all that kind of stuff, and just stay hungry and keep moving. Sir. Yeah, he, he wanted the opportunity to play quarterback. I mean, how crazy does that sound, right? People weren't going to give him a shot to play quarterback. Um, you know, but we, we gave him an opportunity. He came in. I remember standing back behind the huddle with Tom Herman and like, oh, my gosh. You know, like this guy can absolutely do it. You know, I mean, it's everything we saw on film. And yeah, all of his records were right up there with Kyler Murray's. And uh, it's just, it's been a fun thing to watch from a distance in terms of him having 15 practices and spring practices and, and him having 25, 40 uninterrupted practices, whether it's wide receiver or injury, with Kendall Bryles and the development that that guy's had without any interruption. You know, there's been times where he's had to go to wide out and kind of miss a few chapters. He's had to, you know, go to the training room and miss a few chapters. And now he's been able to just have that January through August, um, you know, development phase and he's he's done an outstanding job and just proud of him and proud of the way coach Browns has developed him you've obviously kind of mentioned it already with Derek and his confidence and his poise do you think some of that or just team-wide it bleeds over they, they don't get rattled by much they the whole team's playing with a lot of confidence yeah now you you better have a tough quarterback if you don't have a tough quarterback you're going to struggle as a football team and he's extremely tough and then he's, he's he's one of the best competitors if not the best competitor I've ever been around I mean, he plays his butt off. I mean, he jumps over people, tries to run through people. Um, he does whatever he needs to do. And so when people see a quarterback doing that, then, you know, it makes their job a little bit easier in terms of just buying in and, and doing the same thing and competing at that level. And, you know, here we are, you know, we're eight games into the season. So we still got a long way to go, still got to finish. We got to go out there tomorrow on the practice field and get after it. But, um, you know, I, I wouldn't want to do it with anybody else other than number four. Uh, Major, uh, depending on what happens, and I, and I know you're not into the standings and rankings type guy, but there's a chance that you guys could could be ranked tomorrow. That that would be the first time since you become since you became head coach. Would that does that mean anything? I mean, is that would that be a, a step so. in the process or? I don't, it, you know, I don't think it does. I mean, it, it may you know. Obviously, it, it, it helps everybody see, OK, these guys are being rewarded. But in terms of a football team and the goals that we want and things that we're chasing after, it's there's no rewards sent to our office tomorrow. Uh, they're not going to stop playing college football the rest of the season. It's not over. we got a lot, of, a lot to go to. But it just shows, uh, to me, it's all about recruiting. It shows our recruits what type of ball we can play. Um, when we've been matched up against an undefeated team twice you know, in the last two seasons, we rise up. Uh, we played well at home. You saw a great crowd out there today. Uh, so appreciative of our fans for, for making the time in the middle of a Saturday to come out here and support us, and I know our guys do as well. Uh, being ranked is, is really just a notoriety deal, but our, our players, they're, they're not, believe me, they're not buying into that. They know we got a lot, a lot more meat left on the bone.